Atlanta money. Yeah. Let's get to it. Where are my Atlanta folks at? This was actually great to see. Atlanta, y'all got some bread out there. So metropolitan Atlanta is the most diverse city in the Southeast. The only international city in the South and the 10th largest economy in the entire United States. Atlanta got that bread <laughs> at more than $450 billion in gross domestic product in 2022. And to put that in perspective, if, if Metro Atlanta was a country, its GDP would comfortably be among the 40 largest countries of almost 200 countries in the world. And also, the GDPs of all six southern states, Alabama, Arkansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, and West Virginia, all have GDP state economies that are smaller than GDP of Metro Atlanta. Lord, you can almost fit the three smallest of these states inside the Metro Atlanta economy and still have room. My God, black people do know how to make money, <laughs> but we just damn near spending it. And Atlanta is rolling in the dough. And that's why you see a lot of black folks moving over there. Y'all see that? That's crazy. And I, like I said, you're spending money, black folks. Yeah, we, we the worst. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to uh, do a little bit more background on GDP, because I know a lot of people may not understand what that actually means. The letters GDP are flung around often by the President, the Federal Reserve Board, journalists, and many others. They stand for Gross Domestic Product, which represents the overall market value of all the goods and services a country produces. In a way, it's like a price tag on a country's output, and it measures the size of the economy. The price is determined with the following formula. C plus G plus I plus NX equals GDP, where C is the nation's private consumption or consumer spending. Consumer spending? Didn't I just say black folks know how to make money, but we also know how to spend it. So that's <laughs> so that that's GDP as well. So whatever we spend is how they calculate GDP. And that's why you see Atlanta, which has one of the largest black populations doing so well, because we spend a lot of money, make a lot of money, spend a lot of money. And I want to be clear here, just because the black community it, it ranks the lowest in regards to earnings in the United States. That does not mean the black community is poor. And that also does not mean that the black community is weak. Because if you put the black community alone against all these other countries, I think we rank like, what is it? Somebody correct me, 12th or 19th on the list as a if we were our own country. So the black community is not broke. We just rank last in the United States. But if you drop us in another country, we good. So we got to get rid of that mindset of saying that the black community is struggling. We're not. We just need financial discipline. Right? We, we're not broke or weak. And, you know, we, we, we you can't lead the black community. Black men can't lead. No. <laughs> we, we have money. We just need better financial discipline. It is what it is, man. So let's continue. G is the sum of government spending, I is the sum of businesses' capital spending, and NX is the nation's total net exports, exports minus imports. GDP is an important number because it indicates whether a country's economy is growing and expanding or shrinking and contracting. It also gives important information about how the introduction of new products and services or the improvement of existing ones affect demand. This data helps to plan future product development and improvements. It also helps a country to stack its economy up against others in the world and determine whether it's growing at a comparable rate. While it's not a perfect science, GDP... So, and let me be clear here. The reason why he said the GDP is not a perfect science is because of the fact that the United States is probably worth way more, but they don't calculate illegal money. 
<laughs> and I know that's a kind of a uh, you know a crazy joke if y'all get it. But if we were to calculate the money that's trafficked in the states that's illegal, yeah, we would probably be double than what the GDP says. <laughs> Sad to say, but it is. But the GDP doesn't calculate illegal money. And that's why people, when they say, yeah, I got this side hustle, I'm getting paid under the table, none of that money is calculated. All money is not reported. So they're just going off of what they can actually grasp and get statistics for. So that's why it's not accurate. Does that make sense, guys? <laughs> Because yeah, it's a lot of a lot of foolery going on behind it behind the curtains. So <laughs> let's continue. He can also be used to get an estimate of a country's standard of living. The idea is that as a country's goods and services become more valuable globally. And as the GDP rises, so does the standard of living for the citizens of the country, since they profit from creating and providing the products and services. For these reasons, GDP is one of the most common indicators used to gauge a country's economic health. I know you guys are asking, well, where, where does uh, the United States rank? That's why y'all got me here. Come on, brother. You know I'm... Let's stop right there. I want y'all to see that. So look here. In 2022, the United States uh, ranked the highest in GDP. And these things matter, you know, in regards to like the different countries and where they rank. So yes, currently right now, well, this is an estimate. But in 2022, the United States actually uh, landed on top, followed by Australia, Canada, Germany, United Kingdom, France, Japan, uh, South Korea, uh, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Argentina, China, Mexico, Turkey, Brazil, South Africa, Indonesia, and India. As was funny, you see a lot of the countries that the Passport Bros visit, and the common narrative is that they're going to third world countries to find women. Like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> it's a whole bunch of uneducated people involved in these conversations. Why don't you just look? At the GDP. These are not third world countries. <laughs> it's just funny. But I did get something for the ladies. Since y'all want to be strong and independent. Let me show y'all something real quick. This is the female labor force. <laughs> in 1994. Look at where the United States was. It was uh, right there at the bottom. What was this? Fourth? Since y'all love working, ladies. There you go. <laughs> Here you go. So, at the end of 2023, the United States was what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the list of females in the labor force. So, I did this for a reason so y'all can use it for ammo, guys. When women start complaining about how hard they work, you could just say, Y'all don't even work as hard as the Russians. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. Don't use that, man. Don't use <laughs> Don't use that. <laughs> These Russian women over here working harder than y'all. France, United Kingdom, women, Canada. The women over there, they really working. They the ones that need these uh, need to be stay-at-home moms. Y'all only eighth on the list, sisters. <laughs> German women, South African women. 
Don't use that, man. Nah, brother. <laughs> I, was, I was just messing around. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> y'all slacking. Y'all, y'all ain't even working as hard as these French women. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm about to use that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Man, the group. Oga out there knocking down redwoods. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They out there with the dudes. You know, working on skyscrapers. Why you... You know, United States women, teachers and shit. What does that do? Y'all only work eight hours. Then women over there, they breaking their backs. <laughs> and y'all sitting over there playing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just a little here. I'm just playing, ladies. I'm just playing. 